This class is concerned with motivation and in the class we're going to look at Hertzberg's two-factor theory. Now the Hertzberg two-factor theory approach sees hygiene factors and motivation factors as important in the overall motivation of staff. So the overall motivation of staff may be broken into two parts, hygiene and motivational factors. So the two sets of factors dictate the employee's behaviour at work. Now employees, when they're dissatisfied and unmotivated, then the hygiene factors can move them to a state of not dissatisfied I know that's a, that's a double negative, but not dissatisfied means they are accepting the working conditions, but they're not, uh, but they're unmotivated. They're not happy overall. They're not they're not motivated in work, but they can accept the working conditions. When motivation factors are impl implied on top of this, when they're when they're sitting on top of this, then we have employees that are both satisfied and motivated. So the hygiene factors enable the workers to accept the working conditions and accept the situation to find themselves in employment. Uh, they're not dissatisfied because of that, but they're unmotivated. They're still not engaging the work so motivation factors are ap applied on top which moves them to an overall state of satisfied and motivated. Now let's look at the hygiene factors. Well for a start it could be company policy. The company policy should be fair and clear and not rigid. It should be flexible according to the conditions. It should specify the working hours, the dress code, the holiday entitlement, and any other relevant issues. In other words, there should be clarity about the working conditions, what's expected of the workers. And it should be set out up front so the workers know what they're contracting into. Secondly is the working conditions. These should be safe and clean and hygienic and the working equipment should be well maintained. It should not be a dangerous place to work. It should be um, bright and airy and ventilated and, and of an acceptable temperature and safe. It should be safe for the employees. Number three is the basic salary. Now this should be equitable. It should be fair the same pay for the same job and also between sectors um, same pay for the same job should should equate with what's been paid elsewhere in the economy for similar type work it should be fair it should be equitable number four is job security employees need job security to enable them to plan their their home lives they may have mortgages or commitments, they may have children and they may have obligations to pay fees for, for children, for activities or whatever. They need to go shopping at the weekend and buy groceries. Perhaps they need to run a car, sometimes necessary to get to work. So job security enables them to plan out their lives more, more effectively. And any fringe benefits, number five now, any fringe benefits such as health care uh, promotes motivation. Anything they get on top of the basic salary will help them to engage the work more fully. They will identify with the company, they'll feel they are part of the organization. Finally, interpersonal relations should be good throughout the workplace. There should be no bullying or humi uh, humiliation 
from anyone within the uh, organisation. And that means from managers, directors, foremen, line managers, charge hands, whoever. There should be no element of bullying or humiliation. People should go to work without fear. Those are a list of possible hygiene factors given the variation in companies we can imagine there may be others that could be added for some other companies or perhaps some of these are not appropriate for other companies difficult to say but the point is they look reasonable and they would constitute a good set of hygiene factors the hygiene factors are also known as job dissatisfiers when present do not motivate employees but only serve to keep them contented. So the hygiene factors don't motivate, but they keep the workers they keep the workers going. In order to get full motivation, additional factors are required. These are the, the motivational factors. So motivators are high level needs. Now motivational factors may be, for example, number one, the task. The work should be meaningful, interesting and challenging to promote motivation. The workers should feel that they are making a contribution. They should feel important in work. They are human beings. So the work should be meaningful, interesting and challenging. And they should be recognised, number two, they should be recognised for doing good work. They should be praised when they do some good work. When they have a good idea or they outperform the target that was set, they should be praised for, for what they've done and recognised for it. Number three is an opportunity for growth. Employees like to have the opportunity for advancement. They like to move up the ladder. It not just shows that the company values them, but also that they themselves will have a better home life and they are working for a purpose. Finally, responsibility. Employees should be responsible for their work and this minimizes the need for control but maintains accountability. So the workers are responsible for their work means that less supervision is required and also the workers will feel more engaged if they are responsible for their own work if they are judged by their own work and praised when they get it right and helped when they need help in improving their their own um, contribution a complement of motivators and hygiene factors must be provided by management to ensure employees perform productively and so in other words both parts are required the motivators and the hygiene factors if both are present then according to this view according to the Hertzberg view then employees will perform productively and will engage in their work and be satisfied in their work now this is a short video so that I think is, is all I need to say about this, so thank you for watching.